Hey, this is Charles with Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Today, I'll be showing you how to clean the carburetor on your KLR 650. If you don't already know, anytime you're storing your bike, you need to use fuel stabilizer and drain the carburetor. If you don't do this, what happens is the carburetor gums up and then it makes it hard to start the bike or it won't even start. Now, for those of us that already know this, sometimes it's easy to just neglect it and say, oh, we'll do it later. Then it never happens and the carb gets gummed up anyway. So if you have either of these issues or fuel leaking from your carburetor, we'll show you how to fix this today. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that fuel with ethanol gums up quickly. It can happen in as little as a few weeks. And even if you're running ethanol free fuel, it can still gum up, it just takes a little bit longer. So we'll go ahead and show you how to get your bike back up and running. To do this job, we'll be using some basic hand tools, rags, and safety glasses. Another thing we'll be using is a magnifying glass to help us inspect the jets. Always refer to your model specific service manual for more information, proper procedures, and specs. For parts, we'll need some carburetor cleaner and it's usually a good idea to replace the float bowl gasket unless you've done it really recently. And if you do need more parts when you get into this, we do have carburetor rebuild kits, air cutoff valves, fuel line, vent line, that kind of thing, all on our website. So be sure to check that out. To start out, we'll need to remove our seat, gas tank, and side covers. So we'll go ahead and do that. Now we can start disconnecting the components from our carburetor. Now keep in mind on the back side of this carburetor, we have a choke plunger with a plastic nut that screws on and it's really easy to break that. So anytime you're dealing with that, be really careful. Now we'll start by disconnecting our throttle cables. With our cables out of the way, we'll clean everything up and this will keep us from getting dirt anywhere down into this intake. Next, we'll remove this vacuum hose from right here. And sometimes you'll have a hose on the bottom of the carburetor for the drain, but on this one, we actually don't. So we'll go ahead and remove this hose. The next thing we'll do is loosen our hose clamps. We also need to drain the gas from the float bowl. And how we'll do that is use a rag and place it under the drain beneath the float bowl. And we'll take our Allen key Loosen this drain up and let it drain onto our rag. We also need to remove our starter solenoid bracket and to do that we'll disconnect the negative cable on our battery and that way if any of the contacts on the starter solenoid happen to touch a ground it won't matter. I'm going to roll this carburetor sideways and what this will do is help me be able to show you this plastic nut on the other side and there's another hose that we'll need to take off. So we'll get those two off and then we can actually pull our carburetor out and remove it. To remove this plastic nut here, sometimes it can be difficult to get a wrench on there. And the best way to get it off would be with a wrench, but just so we don't break anything, because sometimes if you're pulling around on that, it can snap the end. We actually found that these 45 degree angle needle nose pliers work really well. And this nut is not very tight, so when you go back to reinstall it, don't crank on it either because it'll strip out those plastic threads. And just be really careful with it when you remove it. Now we can rotate the carburetor to the right side of the bike. And what we'll do, we'll make sure this vent hose is freed up and we can actually Pull back on the carburetor and we'll work the front end of the carburetor out first and rock it out just like that. And we'll keep track of both of these hoses right here. With the carburetor removed, we'll plug up our intake holes with a rag, including the airbox side. All right, we've got our carburetor on our bench. So what we'll do, we'll remove this vent line and an easy way to get these off is just kind of pinch them and twist and you'll notice this is a plastic fitting here. So even when you're removing it from the bike, be careful with that. It's easy to break. So the next one we'll do is this fuel line 
and we'll first remove the clamp and then we can kind of free it up with these pliers and then we'll twist and pull on it. And this is a plastic fitting as well, another thing to pay attention to. So we'll get those out of the way. This thing is filthy. Before we clean the internal parts, we want to start with a clean outer surface. So we'll take our carb cleaner and then we've got an oil pan. We'll just spray all the junk into the oil pan. And the reason this matters is that you don't want to get any dirt back into the guts of the carburetor when you're reassembling it. If you'll notice, we had quite a bit of green junk coming out of the back of this, so that's just an indicator of what we're going to find inside this float bowl. With our carburetor cleaned up, we'll remove this diaphragm cap and keep in mind that it's under spring tension. Not a lot, but we'll keep a finger on top of it just so we don't lose any parts. So we'll move the diaphragm cap, we'll remove the spring and spring holder, and then we'll tip this upside down and remove our jet needle. Next we can take the diaphragm and slide out of the carburetor body, and I'll flip the diaphragm up, and we'll lay it down just like that. Next, we can flip the carburetor over on its top and we'll remove all four screws holding the float bowl. Take the float bowl off and we'll lay it down just like that. After that, we'll remove our main jet. How we'll do that is we're, we'll hold the emulsion tube and use a flat blade screwdriver and loosen it up. Now, if you need more information on the different parts and circuits of the carburetor, we do have a carburetor's 101 video, so be sure to check that out. And we'll loosen up this emulsion tube. Then we'll flip the carburetor over and we actually have the needle jet in the very top. So on this bike, it should fall right out. There it is, right there. After that, we'll remove our pilot jet. After that, we'll remove our fuel screw. Now, sometimes these have a tamper-proof cap. So what this is, the manufacturer doesn't want you messing with this. So if you do have to clean this circuit to get that passageway clean, what you'll do is drill this cap out and remove it. And then we need to count the number of turns that it is out so we return it to the original position. So what you'll do, you'll count the number of turns clockwise, write that down, and then we can remove the fuel screw. This will allow us to put it in the same position when we reassemble the carburetor. So as we pulled this out, this came with the spring and washer. There should be an O-ring still in here. And to help us get that out, we just have some safety wire that's bent on the corner. And that way we can just hook it out. After that, we can remove the floats and float valve. How we'll do that, there's a pin holding these in place. So we'll just kind of poke it out and slide it out the other side. To remove the float and float valve, we'll just tip it forward a little bit and that way the float valve stays on the float. Before we start cleaning all the internal parts, we'll want to inspect for any damage or the cause of the problem we went into the carburetor initially, carburetor initially for. So in our case, our bike wasn't starting, so we'll want to pay particular attention to this pilot jet. If you had a leaking carburetor, you'd want to pay attention to this gasket on your float bowl. And if it was coming out of the overflow, you'd be looking at this float valve right here and checking for a ring around the tip or anywhere or damage to that rubber tip. You'd also want to check for damage on this brass seat. To inspect our pilot jet, you can use a magnifying glass or even a monocle if you're that kind of guy. So what you'll do, you'll hold it up to some light and you'll look down the center of the jet and you're looking for any buildup. It should be a perfectly symmetrical circle. So we'll look down here, get this in focus, and we actually do have a little bit of buildup on this jet. Now, why it's important to use your monocle or magnifying glass is that it's kind of hard to see the buildup without it because this one actually is partially cleared. So 
you could mistakenly put it back in the bike and have the same problem. So we want to make sure that gets cured, so we'll clean that out. So what we have here is a tool that specifically cleans out carburetor jets. Now, manufacturers usually will say to not poke anything down here, and that is the best way you can do it. So if you can get this clean by just spraying it out, that's the best way. So we'll spray it out with our carburetor cleaner, and if you have compressed air, it's a good idea to run that through there too. So we'll re-inspect it, and we'll see if all of that corrosion is gone. So on this jet, it actually wasn't that bad, and it did clear it out. If it didn't clear it out, and you can't get a new jet for some reason, you can actually take an old clutch cable or throttle cable, trim the end off, and you can use one of the wire strands to poke through here. The danger in this is that you can damage that bore inside of the jet, and it will actually change your jetting. So if you can avoid this, you'll want to, but the other option is using the tool that's made for it, and you'll just start with the smallest one. Now, this one is actually too big for this jet. You don't want to force it in damaging your jet. On the side of the pilot jet, you'll have some small holes in a couple different places. So you'll want to make sure those are clear. And what that does, that helps the fuel mix with the air before it actually goes down the carburetor throat. So on these side holes on the pilot jet, I normally won't use a magnifying glass to look at them. I'll just hold them up to some light and make sure they're free and clear on both sides. Next, we'll inspect the main jet and emulsion tube in the same way. So after inspecting the emulsion tube, it actually does have buildup that we wouldn't have seen just by looking at it. And we thought our only problem was with our pilot circuit, but we'll need to spend a little time cleaning this up as well. Next, we'll clean our needle jet and our fuel mixture screw. And we'll just spray those off and visually inspect them for any buildup. Now we need to go through the rest of our carburetor parts. And what we will be looking for is any green buildup and clear passageways. Now, if there's any green buildup, you want to remove it. And keep in mind, avoid spraying the rubber parts with carburetor cleaner. Now, it's always a good idea to replace your float bowl gasket anytime you have the carburetor apart. Chances are you're not in here very often and you don't want to reassemble everything and then have a leak. Another part that's commonly replaced is the float valve. Now, how to inspect this, you'll check for any wear or damage to it. And the common things to look for are a ring around this rubber tip and to make sure this plunger on top goes in and out smoothly. If you have problems with either one, you'll want to replace this part. Moving on to the floats, this is not very common to replace, but they actually can have a leak and let gas into the floats holding them open. So what you'll do, you'll shake them and you'll listen to see if there's any fuel inside of here. If there is, you'll just have to replace the float. Now, while I'm cleaning the carburetor body, I'll spray through each passageway and make sure it has a free flow to the other side. The last thing we'll inspect is the air cutoff valve. This often gets overlooked and its function is to control the air fuel mixture when you close the throttle and keep the bike from backfiring. So we have an O-ring right here we'll want to keep track of. So the air cut valve, what we're looking for is any damage to this diaphragm. Now, we actually, our diaphragm looks like it's coming apart, so we'll be replacing that. Moving on with the inspection, we'll take our slide right here, and we don't want to get any carburetor cleaner on this, so what we'll do, we can take a rag Spray a little carb cleaner on there. And if this is dirty at all, you can wipe this off. And then we'll be inspecting the diaphragm for any tears or damage. The next thing we'll inspect is the jet needle. Now, a lot of times these will get a little wear ring around the middle. And if that happens, you'll need to replace it. But this one's looking pretty new. And if there is some green buildup on here, what you can do is the same thing we did with the slide and spray a little carb cleaner on your rag and wipe it right off. 
Now we'll take our cover and we'll spray this off and we'll spray through this passageway right here. Now we can reassemble the carburetor and we'll start by putting our needle jet in and keep in mind this is directional. You have a tapered end that contacts this emulsion tube, so pay attention to that. Keep in mind when you're tightening all the jets down, they're made out of brass and they're really soft. So just snug them down a little bit. If you crank on them, you're probably gonna break something. And we'll take the main jet and, and install that. Now we'll install the pilot jet. Next, we'll install the float and float valve. So we'll take our float, take our needle right here. Next, we'll drop this down into the seat. And we'll take the pin and slide it through the float arm. Now we'll check the float height. This is something that usually you won't need to adjust, but since we're in here, we'll check it. So how you do this is tip the carburetor so the float goes all the way down. <clears throat> and then if you tip it up a little bit, you'll see that it lightly seats. Keep in mind that that needle is spring-loaded, so if we press down on it, it'll pop back up. So you don't want to do it like that. You want to start from the top, let it sit lightly, and then we'll take our digital calipers and take the measurement. And we'll take that measurement from our gasket surface on the carburetor down to the highest point on our float. So our spec was 17 and a half millimeters plus or minus two. So we've got 18 millimeters and that looks pretty good right there. We're gonna use a new float bowl gasket and ours was pretty flat. We don't wanna risk any leaks. So these are only a few bucks. So we'll install that just like that. When I put this on, I like to put the carburetor body down on top of it and that way it makes it easy. I can just see that the gasket's staying in place. Now we can install the four screws and snug them down. When I do this, I like to go in a crisscross pattern. Next, we'll flip the carburetor onto the side and we'll take our new air cutoff valve. This air cutoff kit also came with a new O-ring. Now the O-ring has a rounded edge and a flat side. The flat side will go towards the carburetor body. Now we'll take our spring, we'll put the cover on and the retainer using our two new screws. After that, we'll install our fuel mixture screw. To do that, we'll take the mixture screw itself and we've got our spring. Then the next one in line will be this washer. After that, we'll install the O-ring. The O-ring will sometimes have a taper to it if you're reusing it. So pay attention to that and make sure it goes back on the same way it came off. We'll slide that into place. We'll, we'll lightly seat it and then back it out to our previously recorded number. I'll go ahead and tighten up our drain screw on the float bowl and then we'll jump right in and take our slide, pop our diaphragm up and then I like to install the needle at this point. We'll take our spring seat and spring now we'll take the slide and put it down into the carburetor body. Now when you do this, be sure that you're aligning the jet needle. Next, we'll make sure this diaphragm is sitting down in its groove, and then we'll install the cap. Now that we're reassembled with the carburetor, there's a couple inspections we'll want to make. Make sure the slide goes up and down smoothly. And if you have some compressed air, I actually like to spray a little on it and make sure it goes up and down. Now that we've checked the operation of our slide and diaphragm, we can put this carb back on the bike and check for any leaks. Now the process to do this is exactly how we took it off, just in the reverse order. If you need any of the parts we use today for your carburetor or anything else, 
We have a huge variety of OEM and aftermarket parts on our website. So be sure to check that out. And if you like this video and want to see more like it, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.